Hey, Newbie Dan here. This video is an introduction to dust collection. If you don't know anything about dust collection, or maybe just a little bit, this video is for you. I'm going to explain the concept of dust collection, the basic terms, and together we'll put together a dust collection system for my garage workshop. So if that sounds interesting to you, stick around. Listen, like most things in life, there's lots of options when it comes to dust collection systems. And I'll talk about those options at the end of the video. But for now, let's just focus on the basics. Chances are, since you're watching this video, you already know what we mean by the word dust. But just so we're on the same page, we're talking about the sawdust created when we cut wood using something like a router or a table saw. Or the fine dust created when we sand wood or even the shavings created by drilling wood. The goal of a dust collection system is to grab all these types of dust and collect them in a receptacle so they don't end up all over the floor. And we might actually live longer if we're not breathing in all that dust in the air. So let's start at the beginning. I know the term shop vac is technically a brand name, but I'm gonna use it as a generic term in this video, kind of like Kleenex. A shop vac is the most basic dust collection system you can have, other than just a broom. Using it, you can go around the shop and vacuum up any dust that's lying around. Obviously, it would be nicer if you could have the dust collected before it ends up getting all over everything. Many woodworking power tools have dust ports, like this one on my table saw. I can attach the vacuum's hose to the port like this. If you look inside the table saw, you can see that the dust port is attached to a plastic housing that goes around the saw blade. When I turn on the vacuum, I can actually feel and hear the air being sucked past the blade and back into the vacuum. When I cut something, most of the sawdust gets sucked down into the vacuum instead of ending up all over the place. In theory, anyway. That's dust collection. I've got the shop vac hooked up to the table saw, and it's collecting dust pretty well. What if I want to hook it up to the router table? It's got a dust port, so I can just take the hose off the table saw's port and attach it to the router table's port. For that matter, I have a belt and disc sander that has a dust port, so I'd like to hook up the shop vac to that also. So, I can move the shop vac around, attaching it to each tool's dust port when I need to. Though, moving around like this is kind of a drag. Or, we can come up with a way to have all the tools connected to the shop vac at the same time, so we don't have to move the vacuum at all. So I place my shop vac at the end of my workbench. I have a remote control power outlet I'm using, so I don't have to walk over to the shop vac each time I turn it on and off. There's a link for this in the description below. While I'm thinking about it, I'd like to say thank you to all of my viewers who use the links in my video's descriptions to buy stuff. It doesn't cost you anything extra, and I get a small percentage of the sales, and that helps support my channel. So thank you very much. I'm running some 2-inch PVC pipe along the back of my workbench. I'll connect it to my shop vac using a section of flexible hose and some clamps. In each place where I want to connect to a power tool, I need a drop. The term drop comes from the idea that dust collection pipes are often attached to the ceiling, and when you need to connect a power tool, you drop a pipe or hose down from the main pipes on the ceiling. I'm not running my pipes on the ceiling because they'd get in the way of the garage door, but I'm still going to use the term drop. To make a drop, I'm using a T-fitting here and I'll connect this flex form hose from Rockler. With a flex form hose connected here, it's easy to attach it to my belt and disc sander, and I can also use it with my drill press. In fact, I have various tools that I take out only when I need them, like my sanding station, and my bandsaw, and I can attach the hose to them whenever I need to. I'm running some more PVC pipe to the end of the workbench. I want to connect my table saw and my router so at the end here, I'll add a T-fitting for one drop, and I'm using an elbow joint for the final drop. Now that I think about it, I'd like to have a regular vacuum hose available to sweep up the floor, so I'll add a T for that drop also. I'm not using any glue, just dry fitting everything. That's so it's relatively easy to take apart and adjust if needed. Also, sometimes I do something stupid like let a rag get sucked in, and if it gets stuck anywhere along the way, I can get to it easily. For the vacuum hose drop, I'm running some flexible tubing down the workbench leg, and I can attach it to the leg, so when I pull on the vacuum hose, it doesn't pull straight against the T. For a vacuum hose, I'm using this hose from Rockler that's expandable to something like 12 feet, 
and when I add a sweeping attachment, it lets me reach most places in the shop. I'm running a section of flexible hose from this T to my table saw and using a clamp. I use these special clamps from Rockler that are designed to fit in the valleys of dust hoses like this. And lastly, I'll run another section of flexible hose from the elbow joint to the router table. You've probably already guessed what the problem is with this kind of setup. When I turn on the shop vac, there's too many open holes. It's like a straw with a bunch of holes punched in it. There's just no suction. We need a way to block all the holes except the one we want to use. That's where blast gates come in. This is a blast gate. When you close it, it's more or less airtight. Not completely, of course, but it's enough for our purposes. I got the blast gate from Rockler. I mention Rockler a lot because I have one close by, but also because they have a great selection of dust collection stuff. Blast gates work best when the ports are vertical like this. It's not mandatory, but when they're horizontal like this, sawdust can get in the slots where the door slides, and sometimes that makes it difficult to close completely. I put a blast gate at each of the drops. So if I close the other gates and open the one for the router table, the shop vac only sucks air from there. If I close that gate and open the one for the table saw, that's the only hose that draws air. By the way, these blast gates don't quite fit into the T and elbow fittings, so I had to mold the PVC to get them to fit. More on that later. Okay, so what happens to all that dust? Well, obviously, it ends up in the dust collector's dust bin. In this case, it's the body of my shop vac. And obviously, when the bin gets full, you need to empty it. Your dust collector will also have a filter, so you'll probably need to clean and replace your filter at the same time. Cleaning this type of filter is messy because the dust gets everywhere. I usually take it outside when there's a breeze, so the breeze takes the dust away. Just be careful where you stand and check to see who or what is downwind. Wouldn't it be great if we didn't have to clean the filter and never have to buy a new filter again? Well, there is a way to avoid having to clean the filter, or at least not nearly as often. That's what this is for. In general terms, this is known as a cyclone or a vortex. Cyclones come in different sizes for different types of dust collectors. Some dust collectors come with their own cyclones. For others, you can buy them separately. Of course, you don't have to have a cyclone if you don't want. Unless it's built into the dust collector, it's completely optional. All cyclones work basically the same way. The cyclone usually sits on top of some sort of bin, which ends up holding the dust. For mine, it's attached to this Home Depot bucket, and I built a stand so it takes up less floor space. I actually put one bucket inside another to help prevent the bucket from collapsing when the airflow gets stopped up. The cyclone sits between the dust collector and the dust collection pipes. When I run the dust collector, the dust gets sucked into the cyclone. The dust spins around and eventually falls into the bin below it. The only thing that continues to the dust collector itself is air, air that contains very little, if any, dust. That means I don't have to clean the filter, or at least not nearly as often. As I said, you don't have to have a cyclone if there isn't already one built into your dust collector, but for me, this has been one of the few things in life that not only lived up to my expectation, but surpassed it. Since I'm trying to keep this video fairly generic, I won't go into details about this particular cyclone, except to say that it's a dust deputy from Oneida, and I got it on Amazon for about $50. They make a version that has a bucket already attached for around $100 if you don't want to be bothered with attaching the cyclone to a bucket yourself. There's other YouTube videos about the dust deputy, so if you're interested, look them up. So let's make some dust. The shop vac is empty and the filter is relatively clean. The buckets under the cyclone are empty. Nothing up my sleeves. The table saw is first up. I close all the gates except the table saw's gate and then I cut some stock. I've got some sawdust on my crosscut sled, so I'll use my vacuum hose to sweep it up. Since the dust collector is still running, I open the dust gate for the vacuum before closing the table saw's gate. If I close the table saw's gate first, no gates would be open, and that's not a good idea when the dust collector is running. See how handy it is to have a vacuum drop here? When I'm done vacuuming, I open and close the gates again and continue cutting. Now I'll close the table saw's gate and open the one over here, which I'll use for the drill press. 
I position the flexible hose where I want it and drill. Looking inside my shop vac, you can see it's still empty, and of course the filter's clean. In order to look in the bucket, I have to remove the lid. I got this cool tool from Amazon that makes it pretty easy to take the lid off. I recommend it. As you can see, this is where the dust ended up. Some dust collection systems are 4 inches, and some are 6 inches, but we'll focus on mine, which is 2.5 inches. 2.5 inches, give or take, is the outside diameter of the dust ports in my system, like on my shop vac, my table saw, and my router table. 2.5 inches, give or take, is the inside diameter of the hoses. This allows them to fit over the various dust ports, and clamps make sure the connection is tight. Some types of hoses have hard plastic tubes on the end. These tubes are usually smaller in diameter, and they can often fit inside a dust port instead of outside. If you find yourself with things that don't fit together, you can make adapters out of PVC, which we'll cover in a moment. PVC pipe measurements are always the inside diameter, so a 2-inch PVC pipe is around 2 inches on the inside. The fittings and couplers that work with 2-inch PVC pipes, like this T, also say they're 2 inches. But in this case, the 2 inches only refers to what size pipe they're designed to work with. In truth, nothing in this fitting measures 2 inches. Schedule 40 PVC pipe is the most common kind of PVC pipe, at least here in the United States. The outside diameter of a 2 inch Schedule 40 pipe is around 2 and 3 eighths inches. That means 2 and a half inch hoses have no problems fitting over them, although you do need to clamp them down. These 2 inch PVC pipes are almost small enough to fit inside 2 and a half inch dust ports. With a little magic, you can make them fit. Here's an example. When I put a flexible hose over my shop vac port, there's a peg that sticks up and I'm worried it'll rip the hose. So I want to make an adapter out of a short section of PVC pipe. I'll mold one end to fit inside the port, and then I can clamp the hose to the other end of the adapter so I don't have to worry about the peg. So let's cut off a short section of PVC pipe for the adapter. My recommendation is to use a hacksaw to cut PVC pipe. In my experience, it's the safest and easiest way to cut it. Just clamp the pipe down, and using a hacksaw, you'll be through it in a minute. You can use a wooden clamp like this to hold the pipe down while you cut it. Or if you have something like this Black & Decker Workmate, it's easy to clamp it down. Another way to cut PVC is to use a cable saw like this, but honestly, the hacksaw is much easier to use. You could try one of the PVC pipe cutters that are available, but make sure to get one that can handle a diameter of at least 2 and 3 8 inches. But all the ones I've seen have gotten very mixed reviews. I strongly recommend against using a table saw to cut PVC pipe. I used a table saw for a while, and I thought I had figured out how to do it safely. I'm not going to explain my technique, however, because it wasn't long before I had a PVC pipe literally explode while I was cutting it. It sent pieces of PVC flying everywhere like shrapnel. It scared the crap out of me. So needless to say, do not use a table saw to cut PVC. I've also read that you can cut PVC using a miter saw, also known as a chop saw, but since I don't have one, I can't really say one way or another. If you have a chop saw and find it cuts PVC safely, leave a comment below. Whatever you use to cut PVC, some people recommend that you wear a mask while you cut it, so that's up to you. When PVC is heated up enough, it becomes moldable. That means you can stretch it to fit around things. Here's some examples. These two hoses are the same size, but I need to connect them to each other. So I cut a section of 2-inch PVC pipe, heated it up, and stretched it around the ends of the two hoses. Now I can connect them easily. And as I mentioned previously, each place I used a blast gate, I had to heat up the PVC and jam the blast gate into the PVC so it stretched enough to fit. Also, these blast gates have a hole in them, so you have to push them far enough in to cover the hole. You can also make a pipe a little narrower so it can fit inside dust ports. I have a separate video on how to mold PVC, and there's plenty of other YouTube videos available on the subject, so be sure to check them out. So once I've molded the PVC adapter, it fits inside the shop vac port just fine. So here's some tips. The most important is, perfection is unattainable. Trust me, you'll always have to sweep up something, so don't get carried away with chasing after perfect. Your dust collection system can only be as good as your tool's dust collection ability. 
In other words, if you get a lot of sawdust on the floor underneath your table saw, it might be the saw's fault, not your dust collection system. So check for YouTube videos with tips to improve your tool's dust collection ability. Minor efficiency improvements can be made here and there, but remember that these are minor and may or may not have a noticeable effect. For example, two 45 degree elbows are more efficient than one 90 degree elbow, or so I've been told. Likewise, Y connectors are supposedly more efficient than T connectors. If you can find flexible tubing that's smooth on the inside, it's probably more efficient than tubing that's ribbed on the inside. If you have other efficiency tips, please leave them in the comments. Thanks. Dust collectors come in lots of sizes and types. As I said earlier, some use four or six inch pipes. Some are huge and take up a lot of floor space. Some are smaller. The only type I have experience with is what I have right now, this shop vac and two and a half inch pipes and hoses. As for what I currently have in my shop, this works fine. Would a different system work better? I don't know, honestly, but for now I'm happy with what I have. With that said, I encourage you to search through YouTube videos to see what types of dust collectors are available and make your own decisions. Hopefully watching this video will help you understand those other videos better. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like what I do in this channel, please consider subscribing and click the notification icon so you'll get notified when I put new videos out. Also, be sure to leave a comment if you have questions or suggestions. Remember to check this video's descriptions for links to products and other videos you might find useful. Thanks.